Hey, how good is it? Ken Bozak from the BitcoinPodcast.com here to talk about Bitcoin and Bitcoin accessories. And I'd like to say thank you for coming and visiting uh, Not Another Bitcoin Interview. Uh, today I have uh, Cody with me. He's a local Bitcoin miner. Well, I'm sorry, Ethereum miner. Local Ethereum miner. And uh, today we're going to pick his brain. Uh, go ahead, bro. Uh, introduce yourself. Let them know uh, how you got into this space and uh, maybe you know what you're doing in the space. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, like Ken said, my name is Cody Spearing. Um, I'm currently involved in Ethereum mining, also Ethereum Classic mining. I dance back and forth. Um, I got originally into the cryptocurrency space probably six or seven years ago. I was inspired by 4chan. Really? Of course. Yeah. Wow, that's I awesome. was. Um, I, that was back when I think Bitcoin was three hundred dollars. Oh wow! And remember how I said I, I had my uh, I told you about this. I had my bitcoins in a wallet that wasn't reputable. Um, there was one I forget the name of, and then the also evil Mount Gox. Yeah, uh, yeah. Everyone that was early in the Bitcoin definitely got hurt, yeah. scammed, ripped off in some way, um, shape, or form as it grew. So I had I think maybe three coins, which you know. So now, it's a lot now. Yeah. That would have been forty five hundred dollars. Wow. It's, yeah, it hurts. It hurts. Um, but that was all in the learning process. I'm I'm mm -hmm. much bigger on security now. Um, but I was out of it maybe for a couple of years. Um, and then I noticed actually you on Facebook. I noticed you doing a lot of Bitcoin stuff. And I was like, is that still a thing? <laughs> yeah. So I started getting really big into it. I started looking at a lot of the altcoins because back when I was in it, the only altcoin was Litecoin. The only one that was really known. Right. And then Litecoin was like a dollar. So we know today, earlier this morning, it was like 24, wasn't it? Something I think like that. The highest was around 30, actually. Yeah. So we already see how things. Now, Litecoin was a slow grower, but. Yeah, well, they took the risk in, uh, with Segwit and everything, and they're mm -hmm. going to reap those rewards for taking that risk. Yep. So I started looking into it, and Reddit actually pushed me toward Ethereum. I started looking at it, and I. I knew what mining was. I knew mining was a thing. I did some CPU and single GPU mining of Bitcoin back in the day, um, but it was real, like small scale. It was kind of just passive. Satoshi's at a time, just to get into yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I, I understood like what it was, and it was mainly CPU mining, um, which is funny how Bitcoin was CPU mineable back in the day. Um, no, not anymore. But I, I pushed toward Ethereum because after doing a bunch of the math. Um, and really looking into, I, I did a lot of um, like calculation. I did a lot of like worst case scenario. Right. What were some of the uh, coins that you were debating on mining and uh, that you decided Ethereum was better than? So I was definitely, um, I was introduced to Ethereum Classic first, actually. Um, and then I noticed, I looked at Ethereum. I put my eyes toward Expanse. Okay, yeah. Which is an interesting one. Um and I think I looked into actual Bitcoin mining as well. Um, I was In this looking day into, and age? I was looking into getting an ant miner, the S9. But even that's not very profitable anymore. Now, right now, it probably is. Oh, yeah. Because Bitcoin just went up $300. Out of nowhere. Nowhere. So it would probably be decent now to get an ant miner, but... That, well, that's the thing with mining. I hear a lot of the times out of the year it may not be profitable, but the times of the year it is profitable. It's yeah. hella profitable. Yeah. So that's so, interesting. Like when I started with Ethereum mining and getting all the parts together, Ethereum was $17. <laughs> it and, seems just like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, because it sort of was. It, it was sort last of month. Was, yes. It was last month. <laughs> this, t this day last month. Oh, it's crazy. And then I remember I was putting the parts together and I saw it spike to like 21. That was a spike at yeah, 21 then. And it, it leveled off around that spike, which is insane. And I started doing all the profiting, and I started looking at all the, like, scales and all that, and it just, it was profitable either way. Uh, what, uh, I'm curious, what kind of hardware do you have, and uh, what kind of hardware were you comparing that to, and why did you come to the conclusion that led you to the hardware that you actually got? Okay, um, great question, especially for all the watchers. Um, people who want to do mining pay attention like now. <laughs> so the hardest part of a mining rig is the motherboard. Um, so if you're a PC builder at all, or you've seen, you work in tech, so you know what I'm talking about. 
Um, the motherboard is the most important part because you need six PCI slots. Right, right. And they need to be PCIe times one or times 16 times eight, whatever, but they all need to be able to accept um, a times one riser. So the riser is like you plug it right in and it's got like the wire that comes up and you can put the card above it. It kind of like, so I have my motherboard here. I put the card above it and the riser kind of plugs into the card then into the board. Yeah, I saw, I saw your it's to pull it. Up. It's to kind of pull it off the board so they can all fit. Um, some boards might have six, seven, eight slots, but they might not support using more than four at a time. Oh. So the motherboards are real hard to find and there's like six or seven boards that are real popular. So they go out of stock like fast. Right, and, and then people I resell them on eBay for a stupid price. Right, and I usually hear by the time people do get them, they're on the next thing, you know. So right now, you can do seven cards at a time on a rig um, with the new MSI uh, carbon boards, which but they're a bit pricey. It's like one hundred and sixty bucks for the board. Wow. So it's like eh, people don't. It's it's is it worth that extra card? For me, no. So. I do a six rig on a Biostar TB85 motherboard. Um, I looked into buying another one just like two days ago to set up a, like a third rig because I have two going right now. Oh, wow. And so they're both mining Ethereum. Yes. Awesome. Um, and some days when I use, um, digress real quick, I use a, a website called what to mine, I think dot com. Just type in what to mine. And it'll show you, you can type, you can like configure what hardware you have, what hash rate it's running at, and it'll show you at that time on, on those algorithms, what is the most profitable for you right now. And when Ethereum Classic hits the top of that list, which it does sometimes, I'll switch over for like a day or two. And then when Ethereum goes back up, I'll switch back to Ethereum. So, How easy is it to, to switch from mining one to another? Incredibly it's simple. So on, I use, um... A lot of people use Windows for mining, and they'll they'll install like the Claymore's um, dual miner. It's Ethereum and Decred. Okay. Um, I did that, but Windows hates Radeon cards running more than like three of them. So getting all six to run and be recognized and not have to do any like weird like driver signature calls and all that it was it was rough. Um, so after Dealing with that for maybe two weeks while trying to put it together and dealing with the fact that the drivers just weren't accepting the cars and I could get them to work sometimes, but it was real sketchy. I went to um, an OS called Ethos or FOS. Okay, yeah, I've heard of it. It's a Linux distribution that has um, the Claymore miners and a bunch of other miners like built in. So you can mine Zcash, you can mine Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Expanse, apparently. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but the forums have told me you can do it. Um, so with that software, you have a thing called a, a config file or a local config or a remote config. So back to your original question, how hard is it to switch back and forth? I have, you have things where it says like global miner Claymore, and that'll be like the first line. And then it'll ask me to have my wallet ID and then I'll have pool number one and backup pool. So I can set an, uh, like a pool number two. And it's literally just a, a text file. And then I put in like my GPU clocks if I want to like overclock the memory and underclock the core clock and whatnot, which we can speak about that a little later. Um, I put all that in and I set it to like my Ethereum, my normal wallet. And I set it to an Ethereum pool. When I want to switch it over, I have another like block of lines underneath of it that all have a pound sign in the front of it or a hashtag. Right, keeps it out of the... And uh, it, com it comments it out. Right. I go into the config and I comment out the top section and uncomment the second one that has my Ethereum Classic pools and wallet. And then I just type in R, hit enter. It reboots and it goes right to Classic. I love the clever simplicity of that. It, it's that great. Awesome. So it's literally just like a couple hashtags and switch it over. Beautiful. And it boots fast. Because Ethos can only be installed on a solid state. So wow. it's like, it's beautiful. Dude, I, I know everyone's waiting for me to ask this, so I'm just going to get it out of the way. Hey, what's up? Um, what is your electric bill like now compared to what it used to be? Okay, great question. Um, in order to calculate what your electricity will be on your rig, if you build one, 
um, you can't really trust the TDP draw of like what that card is on like websites. So, like say the RX 470's TDP draw is apparently 120 watts. Some people know how to take that information and calculate the electricity um, and what it'll draw. Um, you can you can do like that math to um, determine what your actual like monthly draw will be. My rig, be when I was running on Windows, was pulling 960 watts from the wall. And I know that because I have a power strip that's all, it's made by kilowatt, and it tells me right on there what the watt pull is. Okay. Which you can get on Amazon, they're great. Um, it was 960 watts, and my electricity on my home per kilowatt hour is 0 0.116, like, per kilowatt hour. So, like, 11 cents. Okay. And normally anywhere in this country is between like 10 cents and 12 is where you are. So I'm on slightly the higher end. But still within average. Mm -hmm. And my electricity bill, once I converted over the ethos, it brought it down from 960 watts to 840. That, that, that adds up over time. Exactly. I underclocked the core clock of each card because you don't need the core clock. You need the memory clock. Yeah. So I underclocked it job. from 1650 megahertz to um i think 1050 as low as i could get it with, without without it crashing and i took the memory clock and i upped it to 2100 i think from i have no idea what stock was um and that brought the power down and it increased my hash rate from 128 to 135 um which i'll mention hash rates in a second but that my electricity bill right now full disclosure on one rig is 70 dollars a month Oh, However, wow. that rig is pulling in right now on Ethereum's current price three hundred and eighty dollars a month. That's fucking so it's three ten profit. That is beautiful. That's of course right. excluding right the cost of the rig and your manual time spent updating exactly. or moving things. So around. most that's, that's rigs good. will take anywhere between about six and eight months to pay themselves off, probably. That's very reasonable. Mm -hmm. Now, I do want to mention back on that hash rate I said. Yes. Because if some people get into mining, when you go on what to mine, and you'll put in, like, I have six RX 470s, like the Radeon RX 470s, it'll calculate that they have a hash rate of 156 mega hashes per second. It's lying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, on core clock, they have, like, I think it's, like, 128 they get or something. And that's only the reported hash rate. So you have a reported hash rate, you have the average hash rate, and then you have your current. Okay. My reported is constantly 152, because I overclocked the memory. However, the average effective is 135. Wow. So you need to know your average effective in order to properly calculate your profitability. And I use Crypto Compare. Okay, yeah, they're popular. For my um, profitability calculations, because mm -hmm. they've been pretty spot on so far. And also, I uh, use the um, Ethermines pool, and when you're using that pool, um, you can go onto their site, you can put in your wallet address that you're mining into, okay. and they can show you all your stats. And you can, they can even show you on your current stats what your average like minute, hour, day, week, month payouts will be. And like they show you like right there on your current average what they should be, determining with Ethereum's current difficulty, your hash rate, and all that. And you can compare that to what you're actually getting and see if you maybe missed a step, skipped a step, and exactly. if you're screwing yourself out of money. Exactly. Because yeah, I could see somebody making half as much as you running the same rig and be like, what did I do wrong? And like, maybe you didn't mess with your your you know stuff. You have to mm -hmm. you know tinker a little bit. You do. Make um, sure you're getting the bang for your buck. Exactly. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of tinkering. Um like with when I was running on Windows, my increased power draw and decreased hash rate was coming out to a lot of money. At the end of the year, it was like an extra thousand dollars I was losing. Oof. So, I mean, yeah, it's a thousand dollars a year, but that's a thousand dollars. Yeah, it's a thousand dollars exactly, man. Yeah, so I that's mean, that's half another rig. And that's just that was just like an hour's worth of tinkering. I saved myself a thousand dollars a year. That's awesome. So. And as I've said a couple times, because I know we're still revolving around like hardware and we're, we're digressing a lot, but the, so I use the TB85 as the motherboard. Okay. Um, I use two power supplies, but for one reason. Um, I, I have two 850 watts and people were like, why don't you just get one 1500 watt? Okay. You're only pulling 840. Why don't you just use one 850? So one, that's a terrible idea. 
Um, you never want to be Why that close. You never want to be that close to your um, power supplies like max draw. Okay. So if you have an 850 watt power supply, you should stick around 700. And that's just that's not just mining. That's computer knowledge entirely. Um, the efficiency max on a power supply is right in the middle. So if you have an 850, 425 is where it's most efficient, where the least of your power gets wasted. Perfect. Um, now that's one reason to use two. Also because the power supplies I had only came with three PCI power cables. I had six cards. Yeah. So I got two power supplies and I linked them together with a um, PSU adapter. So when I hit the power button, it turns both on. Nice. Which you can just buy off Amazon. It's like a two PSU adapter is literally, I think it's called. It basically just made it like pimped my rig. Yeah. <laughs> like, you uh -huh. know what I mean? That's so cool. Dude. And for the cards, I went for a slightly more expensive version of the RX 470, which did decrease my profit. However, it increased my thermal performance. So keeping the room it's in a lot, a little more bearable. Um, well, I wanted to get to that. Hopefully I didn't cut you off too soon, but I was no. wondering where do you keep your rig, man? Like... Is that it, how was, loud is it? How hot is it? Like, how much of a nuisance is just it existing there? So, these you're hitting all the right questions. Um, so, where do I keep it? I did have it in my little domain where I'm generally in an upstairs, and it's hot there anyway. Yeah, I know. So I had it sitting in front of it of um, an air conditioner for a while, and it was doing all right. But I didn't want to have to run the air conditioner using power. Just to right, keep just the add to the uh, takes from so, the profit. I needed somewhere where I could have an Ethernet line, because Ethos I don't think recognizes Wi-Fi, so you and need to be able to, safer to use. The yeah, Ethernet. so I needed somewhere where I could get a hard line. So I ran a wire down to my basement, um, and I have we have a room down there that's like the gym room okay. that no one uses. <laughs> I mean. Like I have, yeah. I have some dumbbells upstairs, but no one uses it. The um, downfall of most gym rooms. Yeah, right. So it's down there. It's on a table. It's like in a back corner. And since it's in the basement, the room's generally cool. We normally have a heater running to make that room like warm when we were oh, using okay. it. Perfect. Now we don't now even you, need yeah, to. So now you're saving electricity. Dub. That's a double use case. And um, so as for location, my basement. What, um, what about that sound? I hear a lot of people are like, it's it, the home can get to that. It. Was why I picked the RX 470. I did. So if you get the standard reference RX 470 with the blower style cooler, which got the one fan in the front, just blows all the fan out the back, it's going to be a jet engine in that room. It's going to be loud. You have a lot of them running. Yeah. I have the MSI Gaming X Edition. It's got the red cooler with the two big fans in the front of it. And the cooling performance out of that thing is amazing. So I have my fans, I think, set at 75% always, no matter what. So even if the cards, even if one card turns off, the fan still turns at 75%. It's not on like a temperature curve or anything. Um, and that's actually controlled with the Claymore Miner. Oh, wow. It's one of those little lines. They, that, made, it, they made everything pretty convenient. It's like though. Global Fan 75 is literally the... This, it make, you make it sound so easy. Like, it, honestly, it. after you figure it out, it really is easy. Um, so those fans running at 75%, I could be in the room and like I know the computer's there, but it's not that loud. But that's because it's which cards I have. So And they don't break 50 degrees ever, which 50 degrees Celsius, which for something that's mining constantly... That's a fantastic temperature. That's like, I don't know people who game who have temps that low. So, like a normal idle temperature for a card is like 35. On loads, like 75 or 70. These are sitting at 45. So, like, I don't even have to worry about a card burning out thermal-wise. Wow. Because the fans are just so good on the MSI cards. So, I, I picked them. They're a little more expensive, like 20 bucks more per card. Frankly, I think it was worth it. So, I mean, and they're not that loud. I mean, it's it's a pretty simple thing, and I, I can it's, it doesn't even take up room. Like I pull the mouse, keyboard, and monitor away from it because I have a remote config. Just so use I can, your phone. I can monitor the whole thing from like my desktop. Oh, okay, cool. And I can like access it from my work computer if I want to and change some things. <laughs> so you get a notification. I like, switch to classic. Just yeah. do it on the fly. Exactly. That's so cool. Yeah. So I have I have a remote config that's accessible like remotely. So. And, I mean, in this game, you need, I mean, time is everything. Yeah. The game changes pretty quickly. Timing is game. important in this game, so. 
What made you uh, decide to mine rather than cloud mine or even just buy and hold? Okay, so I did consider cloud mining for a while because it's a lot simpler. I literally go on, make an account, and go I'd buy some stuff. And I want Ethereum shut up, add to cart or something. Yep. And I did a lot of um, like profitability and all that, and my rig is running at like I said, 135 mega hashes per second. Genesis Mine was offering me 100 mega hashes for $2,700. $2,800. Now, but that's a two-year thing. Right. So I'm getting 35 less hash rate for $800 more than I spent for my rig, and my rig was expensive. Like, I spent more than I should have. Right. Um, well, the first one, at least. And... It, I, I don't know, it, it came out to be profitable, but it took more than a year to pay itself off on Genesis Mine. And, like, I'm in no way trashing Genesis Mine. They're great. Um, I plan on using them. Yeah, I, I'm um, same, here. same here. And I, I, I definitely plan on using them because either way you look at it, you still get a profit. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I guess it's a lot slower, but that's where the ease comes in. It's so easy. And you just kind of buy the hash rate and forget about it forever. And just in, like, two years' time, hey... You're, you have some coin right. sitting there. And you're like, oh, hey, I forgot about that. <laughs> um, now, as for buying, trading, selling, and holding, I still do all that. Um, so I still, like, I still buy Ethereum. I still buy Bitcoin. I still, like, trade back and forth. Like, when one dips and one goes up, I'll trade. Right. So I still do all that. Um, I'm definitely not just a miner. Um, mining, I would say, is my main. It's... Um, I'm definitely like that's my solid like that's what I do. Um, well, but you even started like doing earlier it today. Professionally, I yeah. mean, you got your own business card and stuff. Like, you, mm. people can hit you up if they need help getting Absolutely. this done. Yeah, uh, you can do that remotely or hands on, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, guys, if you're interested in in this, hit my man up. He can help you out remotely, uh, or if you're local or close enough, maybe get some hands on experience on this. Yeah, dude, I'm that's like that's awesome that you went from like. You know, just dabbling with it with 4chan to I'm um, going to start, you know, my own little mining rig to, you know, I'm going to become an entrepreneur and help other people start making their own basic print press for money. That's right. I'm, so <laughs> it, it's it's like a modern day gold rush is what it is. Well, um, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, how do you how do you look at this as somebody who isn't just a miner? Do you look at your computer as just something that prints money? Do you keep up on the politics of like what you're mining and why or so, any of that? Like, is it just a money printer to you or so? Is it more? No, um, I'm extremely involved in technology. Like, I build my own computers. I build like, computers on the side. Yes. I, like, I build gaming rigs for people. Like, I do a lot. I I enjoy technology. I'm I'm going to get like networking certifications out of school and all that. I'm in school for technical management. It's, uh, it's tech is like what I am, has always been. Um, when it comes to the Bitcoin computer, that, that that thing's not just like a metaphorical money like money printer for me. It's like I do enjoy the politics of it as well. Like just earlier today, I was reading up on um, how now in Germany. Um, Electric car charging stations are using Ethereum for the transactions. Really? Bet you didn't know. Did not know that. So they passed it like recently. So Ooh, now like you exciting. go there and you pay with your normal weird German card with your Deutschmarks. Right. And you it transfers it into a derivative of Ethereum. It's like ETH and a number or something. After that, it's like a, it's like a kind of Ethereum coin, but it uses the Ethereum blockchain. Right. And that's how they, like, I guess they monitor their transactions, they monitor the power draw, they monitor pretty much everything using the Ethereum blockchain for their charging stations. Dude, that is so like, Which I amazing. think might be one of the reasons for the spike of Ethereum. Right, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that would... If I think that might, have been a, <laughs> that might have been a contributing factor. Yeah, if that's the case, you're going to see a lot of other people holding it just for that use case. Yep. I mean, so, charging stations are going to be as everywhere as gas stations are today when people were using horse and buggies back in the day. Yep. You know, we're at we're at the time in our lot in, in the world's life of another total leap in evolution. Mm -hmm. Where we went from horse and buggies to cars, from radios to TVs, from no internet to internet. Like that that whole leap is just happening again. Yep. 
we're going from centralized paper money to decentralized cryptocurrency. It's, it's, we're making a jump and it's happening slowly. A lot of people are still like iffy about it. I got asked the other day, I was talking about Bitcoin and they were like, but is it real? <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, your, is your fiat real? I mean, it says in God we trust. What, I mean, what's not trying to insult anyone's religion. I'm just saying if, if you know, it just yeah. there's that's what's backing your money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in God we trust. No so, silver, no gold, no nothing. And that's one of the things I love about any cryptocurrency. Whether you're talking about Bitcoin, Ethereum, if you're talking about music coin, <laughs> anything, it's that's sort of like how like philosophically interesting Bitcoin and Ethereum and stuff like that. Like a cryptocurrencies are backed by the idea that people give it value. Right. Now, generally, and, and it's I would backed say it's by backed, computing yeah, power. Yeah, exactly. Computer, and the electricity that goes into it and the money that that electricity costs and the mm-hmm. value that you, the miner, hold it and the traders yeah. hold it. And I like that that's what gives it its value. It, it's backed. It's backed by actual electricity. It's backed by computing power. It's backed by what me and you are willing to sell yep. it for or buy it for. And then that all-important fact of it's decentralized. And deflationary. I mean, Absolutely. put those two things together and you got a big bang, man. Yep. And the one thing I'm curious about is though, and I love Bitcoin and I love how far it's coming and I love how everyone is like accepting it. Like now you can go on Newegg and buy a computer with Bitcoin. Yes. You can go to China and I believe that they just accept Bitcoin almost everywhere. Everywhere, yeah, everywhere dude. It's crazy. Over so, China and Japan, actually, like everywhere. McDonald's, Subway. They, yeah. or I don't know about McDonald's. Don't quote me on that. But I do know Subway's like totally big on Bitcoin I over bought, there. Um, I bought coolant for my computer earlier. I have a liquid cooled computer. Okay. And I was on Outlet PC. Um, checkout method. Bitcoin was one of the things. My uh, travel agent, I mm-hmm. uh, actually sold some Bitcoin and got a trip to the Bahamas. And I saw that. My travel agent was that. like, you do know that, you know... I think it was Expedia or whatever. One of those companies accepts Bitcoin. I was like, "Well, we're paying for this in Bitcoin." Oh, do they then. really? I thought yeah. you, I thought you cashed out and I actually didn't. Ha- I did for her to make it a little convenient for mm-hmm. like some. But then we were like, "Well, we can just throw some Bitcoin at it." So it was like, that's, "All right, they accept Bitcoin, so let's do that." That's awesome. Yeah, it was really cool to see. Like, ex- I think it was Expedia. I want to say it was Expedia. It's also funny. I uh, I drive Uber. Like in my spare time. Okay, dude, really? Yeah. Wow, you're and you're a fucking entrepreneur ninja, man. <laughs> right on the back seats, like in front of people, like when they're sitting, I have like a little tip thing, and then there's a placard that says I also accept, and it has my Bitcoin address and Ethereum address. Every single Uber driver I get in the car with, I first start off with how long you've been doing this, why mm. do you do it, oh, yeah. you, you know, blah blah blah. You send and most a um, couple people are in it for the money; they want to get a good savings, and it's just something to do in a spare time. Yeah, I'm like, well. Let me give you like a tip in Bitcoin, you know what I mean? And they're like, well, what's that? And 50% of my drivers end up like within the time I, from A to B, get a wallet and I send them some of their first Bitcoin. Yeah. Another 50% of that 50% have hit me up on Facebook after that. Yeah. Saying like, yo, uh, how can I get some more of this? I watched it after uh, you got my ride or whatever. And it's gone up a lot since the last time I saw you. I'm like, yeah, there's a lot more to the price rise. I mean, the the politics to it are, are what really drive it, but... Obviously, the money is where the attention really gets sought after. Yeah. It's it's neat. <laughs> it really is, dude. Um, hmm. Any questions I should have asked about mining? I mean, there's not much I know to ask. I feel like I've gone through uh, all I know to ask. Is there yeah. anything I missed? So, as I was mining, I guess I'll just go over like some general things that like I wish I knew. Right, like troubleshooting stuff, like stuff um, like that. When I started... Things I wish I knew is that if you don't know how to rewrite a driver, um, if you don't know any programming languages and you don't know how to like turn off um, like signature signing on drivers when Windows boots, don't use Windows. Go on GPU Shack, buy a copy of um, Ethos. It costs like $39. It's worth it. Um, where a Windows key... I, my Windows was running on genuine, duh, when I first started it. But if you, if I were to bought it, it would have been like eighty nine dollars. Right, right. So it's like spend thirty nine bucks on Ethos. Um, when you get your cards, I use PC Part Picker to find the cheapest of a certain card. Um, I think the RX five seventy and five eighty are a little cheaper than the four seventy and four eighty. 80 now, and I think they're a little more powerful. Okay, good. So go for the 5 Series now. Um, Always go Radeon. NVIDIA isn't really great at mining. The 1070, I think, is good. 
but it's also like three hundred and eighty dollars per card, where my our like my four seventies I think were like one sixty. So like we're in this for money. Yeah. Don't go Nvidia. <laughs> I'm an Nvidia. I'm an Nvidia fanboy when it comes to gaming. Yeah, dude. Mining I, yeah. Radeon. Um, let's see what else. Find your motherboard first. Um, GPU Shack also has a little bundle where they give you like a motherboard, a CPU, some RAM, and ethos on a hard drive, and it's like it's 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 like priced exactly where it should be. Like it's not overpriced, not underpriced. It's like it's good. Um, the RAM is unimportant. Get like four gigs of whatever the motherboard takes. Okay, perfect. Good to, good to know. Um, the processor is also unimportant. Get the cheapest processor on your current socket type on that motherboard. I have like a Pentium like G1840 or something, or an 1850. It was like forty dollars. Oh wow! It literally like it could hardly run Microsoft Word, but it <laughs> it can mine Ethereum. It just mines right. great. That's so perfect. So <laughs> that's recycling, dude, at its finest, right there. Yep. Otherwise, those boards would be obsolete, useless, yep. and not profitable to run. And the TB85, as much as Biostar will deny it, was made for mining. Really? It was produced for mining. Um, same with the TB85 BTC. Come on now. BTC. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's not for mining. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, we yeah. saw what you did there. Yeah, The right. little Easter egg. Uh-huh. So, there's also, there's a couple other ones. I think there's like a, I think maybe Asus or MSI H81 board. That's also impossible to find. I recommend the GPU Shack thing because it's like, it's just easier to get, you just click like, give me a board. And whatever they have in stock that works, they'll send you. And they have boards that'll work for four, five, six, and seven cards. Okay, cool. And they have like bundles. Um, what else did I wish I knew? What else did I wish I knew? The case. So, oh, the frame, right? The frame. Yeah. So, GPU Shack, again, did sell one. Um, as of like yesterday, it wasn't on their site anymore. No idea why. Hmm. I didn't buy that one. I used, I went on um, a website, a manufacturer called 8020. It's 80 slash 20. Um, and they sell one inch aluminum tubing. And then they sell little corner pieces. So you can cut your aluminum down to what you need it and you can like attach it with the corner pieces and you can build a frame. Um, I can probably upload like measurements for my frame I used. Um, I had to build the frame so I had to have like a table saw and cut it. I had to put it all together and I had to like measure and I had to, where the GPUs sit, I had to actually drill and have like a threaded hole for the GPU screw to go in there. So I had to go to um, Lowe's and I had to get like a, a thread threader, uh, like a thread set, um, which that was pretty easy. Are you planning on doing that for all, all your mining rigs? I think so because the most rigs that when you go to buy the frame, if you buy one pre-built online, they're like two, three hundred dollars. Oh, wow. I built mine. The materials probably cost me maybe ninety bucks. Plus, the hands-on knowledge is priceless because you're helping others as mm -hmm. well. So, that is... so, and like, I'm more than willing to like help people build these. Like you said, like, um, they can get in contact with me. I can offer my knowledge. I can help you build them. I can even, like, I can come by. I can make you an entire like Amazon cart of like parts you should get, and be like, when it all comes in, call me. I'll come help you build. Well, I want to get to that. I'm happy you mentioned the cart thing because uh, it reminded me to ask of what, if you don't mind me asking, mm -hmm. was the total cost of your mining rate? And then you, you already mentioned, but uh, if you could bring it up again, uh, what you make a month, you know, deducting your electric bill until it's paid off. So um, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. So my first rig was the most expensive one, obviously, because I was figuring things out. I bought you a couple extra You to go premium. Things. I wanted to get the nice cards that work just to make sure that I was getting everything working solid, and I didn't have any hardware problems hindering while I didn't know much. So my first rig cost me $2,000. That's a bit high. Um, my second rig was seventeen. dollars That's a big difference. Brought it down by $300. That's, that's a whole month. Mm -hmm. Each one of those rigs both run the same hash rate. 135 effective. 152 reported. So the effective hash rate is the one that matters. Um, they're both running at the same clock speeds and the same memory clocks. Um, underclocked core, overclocked memory, and they each make right now, like right before I came by here, I checked it, like I refreshed myself up on all the numbers we were getting. Um, it was about 380 before everything, before anything gets taken out. Okay. Each one. From both of them or from each one? Gets each one. Oh, nice. So, and they each 
are taking about 840 watts. One's taking like 852, I think. And that's the second one, because those cars are a little less efficient. The MSI cars were a little better. Um, but that 12 watts, it's like, a, nice. it's like yeah, a couple cents. Um, so I'd say after electricity, I'm making maybe 620 a month with those two. And do the math on that one. It's I got to pay off 3,700. Okay, okay. So, so you'll be in, within profit well before maybe the year is out. Maybe six or seven months. Right. And That's freaking awesome, man. And then whatever from there is just your electric bill. Yep. And then everything on that, once return on investment was hit, it's pay the electric and then I'm just holding. That's so um, another question, I, I, I see this every so often and I'm not the most knowledgeable about mining. That's why you're here. Hey. So um, when Ethereum goes to uh, proof of stake or whatever... What are you going to do with your mining machines? Extremely good question. Um, I asked myself I that. Get one. I asked myself that. That's probably the best question all night. Um, so, there's a couple other altcoins you can mine. Um, Ethereum is definitely like, it's been, I think it has the longest standing, is the most profitable, like over the average time of what's most profitable. I think Ethereum is like number one. Once that pulls away from being GPU mineable, I'll probably just move over to Classic. Because Classic's been going up. Classic has been yeah, pretty Classic. much neck and neck with Ethereum. Yeah, they have a symbiotic pricing. As so, Ethereum goes up, Classic goes up. And then I also have Expanse. I can figure out how to mine Music Coin. What's right. that, like 20 minutes of Google searching? I'll figure yeah, it out. Yeah. Um, I can do... I can donate... My hash rate. Forgot all about that. Nicehash.com. Really? You can donate your hash power. So, like, that that's definitely something for everyone to look into if you're looking to do a good deed with your mining, man. Yep. That's, so you could have, like, one machine running just for a charity. Yep. Is that a tax-deductible write-off? I, <laughs> I feel like it should be, man. That's a, that is awesome. You know, everything with um, cryptocurrency is really gray area with taxing. It really is. You're right. So, um... Speaking of tax, yeah, how do you um, feel about that? You know, the mining and so when you're mining, a lot of people are like iffy on whether or not you can get taxed on profits from cryptocurrency. You can, and you should report it. So the the way that actually works is, and I looked this up. I talked to a lot of like tax advisors, and I found out what how. What, what do I do? Yeah, exactly. What is the, the equation to go through? So when somebody is just merely holding Bitcoin, they have it, whatever. And if you cash out Bitcoin, but you didn't make a profit, you just like say I bought it at 15 and then sold it at 15. Don't hold me to this. I am speaking with another advisor this week trying to figure out more. To my understanding, that's not a profit. So you're not taxed on it. To my understanding. I think it's only like profit that you're taxed on. So you're when you buy coin, which this will be hard for people who buy or and sell constantly coin, right? or mine. People who buy, sell, and trade constantly, like you do, you're constantly like making a trade because you have a problem. Yeah, dude, <laughs> stop blow my spot up on my own channel. But you're right, I do have a problem. Nah, you're good. Um, <laughs> but you you have a lot of activity. Yes. So someone like you, it'll be a little rough. Um, you'll have to like really find out how much cash you put in. So when you buy with cash, like put that in like an Excel file or something. And when you cash out, if you don't cash out everything, it's hard to find yeah, out how first much in, you're first out. Yeah. So it's hard to find out. Like if I buy like a Bitcoin, then a Bitcoin, then a Bitcoin, if you're buying Bitcoins at the time, one, find me, but <laughs> Say you buy like an Ethereum here and Ethereum there, but then you don't you cash out just a little bit. It's hard to find out like, well, how much difference is that from what I bought of that to what I sold of that? And it's it gets a little rough, but if I bought like an Ethereum at 20 bucks and I sold it at 37, I need to apparently report $17 of profit. And that's only after capital gain, I believe like five or ten thousand, something like that over the year. So you yeah. have to make a couple grand before you're even worrying about this stuff. I think so. Um, now, just in case that's not true, because I heard that's true. 
Okay. And I heard from a couple of people that is how it is. Then I also heard, eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, how are they so going to really know? I've been logging everything. So whenever I mine a coin, and I have it cash out every time I do one in my pool, it cashes out to my Jack's wallet. Um, I'll log it in Excel, what I got of that and what its current price is. Okay. And then I have it all totaling. And then if I go to sell, I'll, I'll try to sell like an even amount of coins. And then I'll find out like... Well, it would have to be the earliest coins that you put in the Excel... No matter when you send any, you have believe to go so. back to the earliest. Mm -hmm. I believe that's the way it works. And then if I if I make any profit, then I have to report that. Yeah, I heard a little loophole for this. I'm not going to put anyone on blast or say who told me this. I'm pretty sure this is it. Sound legit? But um, say we're you're mining right now when Ethereum's at eighty dollars each. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you wait until Ethereum goes to fifty bucks sometime. And you just move it from your mining wallet to another wallet, and that counts as a sale in the negative. You can just report that as, you know, a loss. If you wait till it goes down from the time that you got it, mm -hmm. and move it to any wallet, any external wallet, could be yours, could be someone else's, it counts as a sale, and that's a loss. So, I mean, I just have to prove that you sold it to yourself and put it in another wallet. It might very well. It. But that might also count within the gray area of like tax evasion. Yeah, they're going to find the uh -huh. the so, actual address of the coin and follow it from wallet to wallet to transaction. So, it is th that's why everyone's excited about all these um, you know confidential transactions. Yeah, yeah, Litecoin, Which, Segwit, confidential transactions on the Lightning Network. That's going to be Ripple really excited. in there too. Yeah, Ripple, uh, Monero, Zcash, Dash. Uh, I'm excited about Ripple. I'm excited about Dash being on iOS and the new Jax yeah. update. That blew me away. I was like, all right. Is it only iOS? Yeah, it's on iOS now. Wait. Jack's wallet has no, Dash. No, I've had it. Okay. Yeah, I've had it. Ha! Really? Yeah, I have Android. Oh, yeah. Well, I have both. I just mainly mess That's weird how it only you goes on it? certain ones. When it comes to, like, cryptocurrencies and, like, affecting everyday life, the fact, like, John McAfee, I bring him up a lot because he scares the crap out of me with all his shit. He really does. But like, it made me think about how much more secure iOS is on my mobile phone. Mm. The permissions you have to give on some of these things like aren't even available on iOS. You can't even screw yourself by letting a third-party app you know, snoop on your, your background applications. But on Android... It's like default in the in the operating yeah. system for all apps to communicate through all apps. Yep. So if you download a third party app and you open your Coinbase app, that third party app just watching your screen right now. Yep. And uh, that freaks me out. So I don't use Android for that reason. I just basically stick with iOS just because it's a safer hardware. Yeah. Um, iOS hardware is great. The way it's programmed is fairly secure. Um, I use Android mainly because I understand if there's anything I want to hide, don't put it on my phone. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> but, I mean, I also don't have anything to hide. Yeah, you're reporting everything. That's how I feel. Like, yeah, I'm totally so. going to pay my dues. I mean, I'm I'm not going to be greedy. I'll yeah. pay my taxes. I'll fill some potholes. This is That's what it's all about. I'll pay my taxes right up until the point where it's, like, completely decentral, and they just can't. Yeah, you're right. Like, I'll just... Once I no longer need to cash it out to U.S. dollars. Do I see taxes being, like, a smart contract just waiting to happen. Where, like, it just the money comes out of payouts, and then there's these things that need to get done and in importance. That it once just, I can go to ShopRite... Once I can go to ShopRite and buy something with Bitcoin... I don't know if that'll ever happen, honestly. I'm not sure either, because... Like, Altcoins are going to serve their purpose, and I see... That if Bitcoin were going to be used by everybody for like daily transactions, it would just congest the network. It's not really what it's for. It is and yeah. isn't. But what I could see is these establishments using, um, you know, how, how Wawa and Starbucks just started using their app and you put money on the, as a gift card and yeah. they just scan the QR code at the register. Yep. They're dipping their toes in this. They're eventually going to have a Wawa cryptocurrency and they're going to... Wawa the, coin. Yeah. And all <laughs> the Wawas are going to be mining the coin. And they're going to be generating their own revenue, and, and they're going to be... When you go there and you top up or you buy a Wawa gift card, you're really buying a cryptocurrency, and it's an in-house currency. It doesn't matter which Wawa store you spend your money at, or if you ever actually swipe the card and spend the money, because mm -hmm. they technically got the holding. Like, I see that being the next step. I, 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 hopefully, it is. Yeah, I don't, I don't... I'm not sure if I see Bitcoin everywhere, but I definitely see blockchain technology everywhere. 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 It, my car, your, your street light, I mean... 
I can see it being applied everywhere. Mm. I mean, anywhere that uh, uh, internet is applied, yeah. blockchain technology will take that. And I'm excited about blockchain technology because a lot of people are now just using it as the backbone of whatever they want to develop, like an app they want to develop, a website they want to develop. You can use blockchain technology for nearly anything now. It's super secure, dude, for the cost. Just like the charging stations I mentioned. Like, yeah, dude, that's insane. Like That I was excited about I, when I heard that. I was like, what? And the fact that they picked Ethereum. It was German, you said, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's so dope. In Germany, yeah. That's so dope. And the fact they picked Ethereum was awesome. It is. Like, yes, I'm sure Team it's a smart contract really. I think, um, was it Mercedes? Somebody just got involved. One of the car companies just got involved with the Ethereum and stuff like that, looking into smart contracts for their cars. And I could, that's another thing I could see. That's is, cool. Is like, imagine Ford just making a smart car and it is its own business that makes money that's self-driving like its own Uber. Yeah. Where Ford just produces this thing. You don't buy it. It's just there by Ford. It's owned by Ford and it just does decentralized Uber driving and you just pay the car and the car is its own Some company. dude's taking notes right now. <laughs> <laughs> Keep taking notes. Do it. I mean, it's like that's – it has to be the future. I don't want – I like the fact that I can talk to my Echo Dot and control my lights. And that's just a minor convenience on yeah. what we can do with this stuff. Like, I could be driving down the street and my car could have, you know, a blockchain technology where it's communicating, you know, with the street lights and just says, turn on as I get close enough and turn off as I get away enough. And it's not wasting electricity. And the reason that we're not running that right now on Windows is because your car would be at risk. And right yep. now it is. Every smart car out there took zero uh security into consideration you can hack any smart car they, yep. they didn't care they were just like uh oh, no one's gonna want to hack this and like uh you can go on youtube right now and there's a 12 year old that will hack your self -driving some dude car. was like bet yeah <laughs> exactly like and that's why we're not doing what blockchain technology can do with the internet the way it is now it's not mm. secure enough it's not cost effectively secure enough once i can get myself a blockchain challenger My life is complete. Um, back to mining though, because I know everyone's really interested in that, and that's uh, the point of this. I just want to know, like, what is, uh, where do you see mining going next? Like, hardware-wise, um, difficulty-wise, and stuff like that. Like, where do you so, see the next? In year order or two for, in, in order for mining to stay viable, um, at least with GPUs, um, I think Ethereum is like ASIC resistant. I've heard things, but I never cared enough to actually Google to find out if it really is. Um, but it's apparently going to go away from mining entirely. It's going to have that change where you can't mine it with GPUs anymore. Mm -hmm. There has to be a backup altcoin for, me, altcoin for me to fall back on as a GPU miner. And you'll go on a lot of forums, and a lot of the um, when you Google like mining, and you go you find like the Ethereum forums or how, whatever. All the results are from roughly 2016, and everyone starts like losing faith in it around like sometime last year. It's because Ethereum stopped being profitable for a couple months, and people were like, "Ah, Ethereum mining's dead." That's a couple months out of the year; it's not profitable. But the couple months it would have been would have been hella profitable. And look here we are. The thing you just said earlier. So, where do I see mining? I'm not sure. Um, I did this as an experiment. I did this as like. If it eventually just stops being profitable, I can take the rig apart, sell it for parts. Right, I can it was sell still a fun experiment, regardless. Exactly. I learned something. I made a bit of money in it. I did something cool that not many people within the scene do. Right. I was literally, like, well, metaphorically, I was out there with an ether pickaxe in an ether mine. Right. Just, you know, I, I was mining. It was, it's cool. So I can either find a, like an altcoin to fall back on, like Ethereum Classic or Expanse, or I can go, eh, I don't feel like it anymore, and put 37 Radeon cards on eBay. And still make your money. And make probably most of the money back. Right. So a rig that I built for 2000 I could probably make 15 back out of. So I mean, like each card that I bought for 160 I could probably sell for like 190 bucks or something, depending on what the price is then. So you have a fallback plan, worst mm -hmm. case. Yeah. And then, like, I can sell the open air case as an open air case online for probably even then more than I built it for. The power supplies I could probably sell or just build computers out of them. Screw it, is what I do. The motherboard I'll sell for like way too much money because people are looking for them. Yeah, I bet. So, 
<laughs> yeah, you said they're on back order most of the time, so there so you go. There, I, I like the fallback plan is there. Where do I see mining generally? Where do you see you in mining then? Do you think you're going to stick around in this for years and years, or are you just so just if do this, this until continues, you're just bored? if this continues being viable, I want to have a farm. Really, and mm. End Games Farm. I mean, dude, you're already on your third rig in what? So two months. Yeah. So I want to have a mining farm. I want to find a location where electricity only costs like nine or ten cents per kilowatt I hour. I see solar mining farms. That's what I want. That'd be cool. I want it so bad. I know Tesla got that house battery that stores energy mm -hmm. and, and delivers it. Right. I want somebody to utilize Solar City Tesla battery mining technology so bad. So it's literally free mining, and you yep. just see farms of it everywhere. Yep. People are just renting plots to have their farm. Yep. And that that would definitely be an idea because, yeah, again, you're throwing more money into it. But the return on investment would be a little faster, right? And it's cleaner. Yep. It's your this. And that's like the which is ultimately to, like, like the, the politics moral goal. of it. Yeah. It's like the moral goal. It's the politics of it. Yes. Um. So yeah, that, that's that's my goal. I want to have a farm. I want to have like a hangar <laughs> with like network switches as far as the eye can see, and just rigs. Well, doing the mining yourself. Plus doing the side hustle where you're helping people mine or building mining computers and being like a, a mining consultant, uh, a digital prospector, if you will. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, you're not far off, dude. Imagine if we, you know, you started doing this a year ago. You'd yeah. be really, really close to that yeah. goal. So, I mean, a year from now, maybe two years from now, it'll be so realistic. What I want to do is find out if I can take out a business loan for this. Ooh. And just like 50k on like mining rigs. I'm sure if you walk in there and show them that you got a couple k in uh in reserve. Yeah. They they may bite. I mean, I went my first month in um. It's a little segue here. My first month in cryptocurrency. Um, I went to a bank and showed them. I bought some cryptocurrencies at this price. It's at this price. I just need like five grand. Here's my paycheck. So you can see I had a job for like years. I've been yeah. working at the same place for like five years. Yeah. So like, you know, I got, I'm going to pay you back. And they just like, I should have lied about why I wanted the money, I guess. But they were just not trying to let me get the money. I'm like, yeah. but regardless if it's for a stupid reason to you or not, I can pay it back. Yep. And they just didn't give me the money. And I'm so sad because I would be in a good spot. But I mean, I, hopefully they they see the value in mining and maybe you have to go in with a, a story that's going to make the uh, yeah. the banker a little more willing to part with the bank's money, man. Yeah. But um, yeah, I guess we could wrap it up. I mean, is there yeah. anything I missed? Anything you want to tell every anybody? Um, no, nah, honestly, um, I think I hit a couple of the concerns that like, some people would have if they're like again if there's any questions like I we missed, they can y'all can message me on Facebook. They can message you. Get to me. Yep. You can add me. Like I'll I'll add people back to my heart's content. Um, if you want me to help you build a rig, get in contact with me. If you just want me to build you a rig, get in contact with me. I'm doing that too. Um, what's the uh, turnaround time on that? Say I put an order in today. How long to get a functioning rig at my place? Let me do some math and be realistic here. I don't want to give anybody... Yeah, flip. no, no. Worst case scenario. That's what I think people would want. So, say if I bought all the parts and everything shipped to my house in, like, one week. Okay. From the point of, like, stuff getting to my house, so there's one week, I say I could probably have it built within that week. So, a two-week turnaround and, um... I wanted to... I'd say, I'd say, like, two-week max. Oh, wow. Likely. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, perfect, dude. And that would be, uh, you could handle more than one at a time, or would that be per order? So there could be a backlog, just letting people know. Yeah, there could be. If, if people were like, if I get like 14 people tomorrow who yes. are like, bruh. I know a couple people that are going to be hitting you up. I, did, I told people what I was going to be doing a video on today, and mm -hmm. my inbox got pretty busy. I'm sure it's going to... There is a yours. slight problem with finding graphics cards though because you're buying six at a time yep everybody's buying six at a time so you you go to like i went to new egg and i was like they only had four of this one card in stock then this site has two of another card so if i build rigs i'll of course ask people if they're cool with it but you might get mix match cards they'll all be like rx 470s or 480s but they'll have like different coolers on them and stuff that might happen it doesn't change anything okay um 
Like I've I constantly see rigs that have like seventeen different kinds of cards on them. If um, like, I guess I w- I would like to end on like a, a couple questions here. Like, uh, what if or how would you describe in like a, a one to five star difficulty, one star being easy, five star being difficult for like somebody that's never built a computer or programmed ever to just start building and mining? Okay, so someone who's never built a computer ever, let me answer this with a different question, like a different answer. I've built hundreds of computers. My first mining rig was like a four-star difficulty, okay. five being the most. Um, my second rig was like a one, because I knew what I was right, doing then. Right. So I've built a lot of computers, and that was difficult. Um, so if you don't have any experience... I, it may be best to say, don't waste your money. There's, there's a lot of professional. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff when you, you have to hop into the BIOS of the motherboard. You got to change a lot of settings. You got to change the PCI. So if you don't know what a BIOS and, is. Just call you. Yeah. Yeah. Basic input output system, by the way. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So I think the hardest part was the drivers. If the drivers didn't give me an issue, I would say that it would have been like a... Because that's hands-on software editing. Yeah. Okay. So if the BIOS, I'd say it would have been like a two and a half to three star difficulty for my first one. It would have brought it down like a whole star and a half. But that's on... also with a hundred you know, builds under your belt. Yeah. So I would want to let people... So... Want to let people know... Ha. Hi, camera. <laughs> there was a message. I just wanted to let people know uh, how difficult um, you know, it could be for somebody to jump into it. Because I have... Which is weird to say. Uh, I only had like 10 months in cryptocurrency yeah. under my belt, period. Yeah. And, um, you know, with 10 months of understanding, I still don't feel comfortable enough doing it on my own. So I, I don't want I, it to, like, discourage people, though. Okay. Like I said, um, yeah, I'm saying it's difficult, but it's not impossible. Okay. And you're not going to get anywhere straying away from something that's difficult. So if you want to do it yourself, by all means. I'm not. I'm not here to be like, yeah, man. Let me do it for you. Right. I'm the so, same way with the phone repair. I'd like teach a man to fish. I, I would love to you exactly. learn this. I would love to teach a man to mine. So that is so perfect. So like, if and again, if somebody like wants to do it themselves, but they're still concerned, I'll help you. I'll come over. Yo, he's the man, man. Um, like I, I got you. Uh, at the BitcoinPodcast.com, we like to end things with a uh, pretty difficult question. Uh, All right. I don't know if you're familiar with the podcast or have listened to it, but um, I, I have. I would like to see what you would say um, explaining Ethereum or what Ethereum is in 10 oh. words or less. In 10 words or less. Oh, boy. Well, you know what? What is mining Ethereum in 10 words or less? <sighs> Turning computer power into money dude that's perfect dude that's perfect that nails it i think it. i think that was that was five that was five. nails it and i think that's probably at, if you're if you're trying to stay simple that's about as spot on as i think you're gonna get yeah you, uh, that's the purpose of the question is to answer and there's, there's so many ways you could have that yeah. that really nails it man mining ethereal man that's perfect yeah. so it's yeah Dude, perfect. Thank you, uh, everybody. Hit up my uh, digital prospector friend over here, and uh, thanks for uh, stopping by, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely.